<clears throat> Would you give your hands to Kasten for, for such a wonderful leadership? <clears throat> the only problem he has is he's too tall for me. That's the only problem. <laughs> I am uh, so blessed to be with you and uh, to experience your beautiful country. This afternoon, Pastor Brian took me to Skagen, and it was wonderful to be at the top of Denmark. And uh, it was such a wonderful experience to see this place. And I'm so grateful for the opportunity to meet wonderful young leaders like Kassen and Ingeborg and Charlotte and all the others. So I am so blessed to be here. And I bring you greetings one more time from our Bishop John Berdowski in the North American Lutheran Church and also from uh, my family in the United States. As it has been said, I will be leaving right after this service, but uh, it has been wonderful to be uh, in fellowship with you and worship with you. The message tonight is on prayer. Everybody say prayer. One more time. Prayer. Very good. So we're going to talk about prayer tonight. And the major text that is assigned for our reflection comes from the book of Colossians chapter 4, starting from verse 1 to verse 6. I am going to read it. Since we all have been sitting and we will be sitting for the next 25, 30 minutes, shall we stand for the reading of the scripture? Masters, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving, with all praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak, Walk in wisdom towards them that are without redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. Amen. Let us pray as we stand. Father, we come before you tonight in humility, seeking your wisdom and your guidance so that you can teach us your disciples came to you and said, teach us how to pray, for we don't know how to pray. Tonight I pray here in Denmark, saying, teach us how to pray, for we don't know how to pray. Empower us, bless us to have a life of prayer. May this night be a night of transformation for our life so that we can look like your son and follow him all the days of our life. In the name of Jesus and the people of God said, Amen. One more time. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. I am going to lift up a few words describing or explaining prayer. By the way, I've been very, very blessed by the message this morning. Pastor Mortensen was wonderful in his uh, teaching, and I got so much out of it. Thank you, Pastor Brian, for the translation. I've been very blessed uh, by the teaching. The first thing that I would like to talk about when we talk about prayer is what is the purpose of prayer? Why do we pray? What is the purpose of prayer? It's very important to understand. The purpose of prayer is a confession of our brokenness, is a confession of the condition of our life. We pray because without God, we can do nothing. Without God, we can be nothing. This season, or this conference, we've been talking about being salt. 
This salt was not like this when it was in the ocean or in the sea or in the lake. It is helpless without the intervention of human beings. Our life can never be the salt of the world unless we are touched, processed, handled, and transformed by God. Why do you pray? Because your life is powerless without God. Because we cannot save ourselves, we cannot redeem ourselves, we cannot transform ourselves. Without Christ, we are nothing. He is the Lord and we are the servants. He is the Father, we are the children. He is the King and we are subjects of his kingdom. That's why prayer is so that we can confess our weakness, our emptiness. Telling God, without you, I can do nothing. The purpose of prayer as a Christian is not only to show our brokenness. It is also to have a relationship with God. In my early Christian life, prayer meant different than where I am now. In my early Christian life, prayer means going to God and telling him what I want and what I need from him. But through life, that has changed. Now, I go to prayer not to talk to God, but to listen to God. Prayer is more of listening, receiving instruction. My friends, you all have plans what to do and where to go after this conference. But unless God is involved in that plan, that plan can never succeed. So having a relationship with God is a critical piece and a critical practice of prayer. Relationship with God. If I take your phones from you, if I collect your phones from you, and if I look at the most frequently called number, that is the relationship that you value most. It's maybe your father or your mother, your wife or your husband or your child or somebody in your life. The number that you frequently call is the relationship that you value most. Do you pray frequently? Do you pray frequently? If we pray frequently, that means we value our relationship with God. The most important person in our life is God. The most ignored person in our life is also God. What happens when you ignore somebody that you dearly love? They will start to complain. They will start to feel pain. They will start to distance themselves from you. The purpose of prayer is to have a close relationship with God. I want to go to my second point. Now, as we've seen the purpose of prayer, the second point is what is the perspective of prayer? The mindset. How should we think when we, when we pray? Where should we look? Perspective is something that guides you. It is like your lighthouse. It is something that calls you. How do you pray? Luther teaches us, when you pray, pray the scriptures, the language of God. What is the language of God? There was one joke during communist days. There was one very, very elderly lady, very old lady in the train in Moscow, Russia. And at that time, Russia was in the middle of the heat of communism under Lenin and Stalin and others. They've denied God and they've said, God doesn't exist. And this woman, was in the train studying the Hebrew language. She was very old, probably 90, 95 years old, but she was working hard studying the Hebrew language. And a young man in the train asked her, Mom, aren't you too old to study a new language? 
you are 95 years old. Why are you studying a new language? She said, I am getting ready to go and talk to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am preparing myself for this language. And then he asked her, what if you don't make it to heaven and if you go to hell? She said, I know Russian for that. I'm prepared. <laughs> what is the language of God? The language of God is not Danish. It's not Norwegian. It is not English. It is not Romo. It's not Amharic. It is not Russian. The language of God is the Word of God. It's the Word of God. Therefore, when we pray, we have to pray the Word of God, the written Word of God in the Gospels, in the Epistles, in the book of Acts, in the Psalms, in the books of the Torah, in the books of wisdom, in the Scripture. Luther said, speak the language of God. Pray Scripture. The perspective of prayer comes from the Word of God. The Word of God has to screen, examine, clarify our prayer life. Let me go to my third point. What is the principle of prayer? Our prayer life has to be principled. Principle is like a line that you see in the stadium that the athletes run through. It is a written line. We have to have principle. We have to have discipline the frequency of our, our prayer the discipline of our prayer the line of our prayer sometimes we wonder we are sometimes God blesses us by not answering our prayer if God answers all our prayers most of us will be in trouble God blesses us by not answering our prayer because our prayer life sometimes is not principled the principle of prayer is something that guards and guides our life from point of departure to point of destination. From down there where we are down to the place where we are filled with the presence of God and with the blessing of God. Principles of prayer comes from the teachings of Jesus. One of the most wonderful things as a gift in the scripture is the Lord's Prayer. Luther teaches that in the small catechism. What does it mean to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. All of those ten sentences are principles of prayer. Teaching us what to pray for, how to pray. Not to wander to the left or to the right. Sometimes praying for wrong things, for the wrong purpose, driven by our consumer ambition. Principles of prayer comes from the discipline in the life of Jesus. You know, immediately as Jesus went to his ministry in the book of Matthew chapter 4, the first thing he did was praying 40 days and 40 nights, fasting and seeking God. The single most important action for Christians today is to pray. The single most important things that Christians ignore is prayer. We have to come to prayer. We have to pray as individuals, as families, as congregations, as a nation, as a group, as a conference. This is a time asking him to confess, without you I am nothing. Without you I can do nothing. Without you I can be nobody. Prayer is critical, my dear brothers and sisters. My fourth point, prayer is a process. Some of you are very good in prayer. Some of you are not very good in prayer. Some of you pray every day. Some of you pray sometimes. Some of you don't even pray at all. It doesn't matter where we are in life. We can start tonight. But we have to know, prayer is a journey. Prayer is a process. It is a process just like a relationship takes time to grow. Prayer life 
takes time to grow. We start slow. Where do we start? We start by coming to God and saying, Lord, I don't know how to pray. Teach me how to pray. Lord, I have no prayer life. Give me a prayer life. Lord, I don't even know what to say in prayer. Put the right words in my mouth. And the Lord will start to guide and lead you. Prayer is a journey. I love studying the book of Psalms, Psalm 43. It is like a journey when somebody starts to pray step by step until the word of God consumes us. We start praying with our human words and then we grow into praying in the words of God. But we start obviously with the word of God, with the human word. When we come into prayer, sometimes we are tired, we're mad, we're angry, we're bitter, we're tormented, we're stressed, we're confused. We don't know what to say. And we come to God and express our feelings, our emotion, whatever we're thinking, our own paradigm, our own worldview, our own perspectives. But God slowly pulls us out of that situation and step by step grows us into a relationship with him. Then, in the process of prayer, maturity comes when we start to pray in the language of God, which is in the word of God. If you like it, say amen. amen. One more time. Amen. You know, praying in the word of God is the destiny of our journey. When you pray, do not pray with your Bibles closed. Always start your prayer from the Word of God, not from your feelings. Sometimes we start to pray from our feelings. Lord, I am sick, please heal me. Lord, somebody is angry, help him. Lord, I pray for that situation. Don't start from situations and from feelings. Lord, I want to start from your Word and then examine my feelings from the perspective of the Word of God. I am not the authority. The Word of God is the authority over my life. The Word of God comes above me. I am under the Word of God. I live in the United States, and I am an American now, and one thing that I love is the Pledge of Allegiance to the, when, uh, when we say the Pledge of Allegiance, in the United States. We say one nation under God. One nation under God. I love that statement. Your life, your home, your church, your business, your profession, your family, your marriage must be under God. And the authority of the word of God has to be above our life. And we have to be examined. It doesn't matter how we feel. It doesn't matter where we are. The Word of God created us. The Word of God can sustain us. The Word of God will lead us. The Word of God will give us victory. The Word will stand forever and ever and ever in the mighty name of Jesus. If you love it, shout amen in Denmark. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why we're saying the Word of God is always victorious and our life has to be under the Word of God. We should not start with our own emotion. That is a journey. That is a process when we start. I grew up in a Christian home. My father was a Lutheran. He was a Lutheran church leader in Ethiopia. But as, as a child, as a pastor's child, as a church leader's child, I was not reading scripture in my early life. I love to go to church, I love church music, I love the youth, I love the kids, but I was not reading scripture. My father gave me a Bible and he said, read this, it is good for you. Read this, it is good for you. That's all he said. So I took, to, I took my Bible and I was going to a boarding school and, and when I was in boarding school, I have the Bible, but I was not reading the Bible. 
All the time, I used to put it under my pillow and sleep on it, thinking that it will help me or seep into my mind. <laughs> and at the end of the year, when I went back home, my Bible was worn out, and I gave it to my father, and my father was proud of me. <laughs> he thought I was reading the scripture. A lot of you have your Bibles, but I don't know how many of you are reading your Bibles. I don't know how many of you are in your Bibles. Effective, effective, powerful prayers are prayers prayed according to the Word of God. The fifth point that I would like to give is what is the right position of prayer? How shall we pray? Standing up, kneeling down, sitting down, lying down. The position of prayer is not a physical position. A position of prayer is the position and the posture of our heart, the condition of our spirit. The Bible says God loves the brokenhearted. One of the greatest problems of the Christian church today in the 21st century is what we call pride. We think we are educated. We have all the degrees. We've written all the books. We've done theological research. We've been Christians for so many years. Now we are the authority and the Bible is subject to our authority. That is what we call pride. The greatest position in prayer is brokenness, humility. Jesus mentioned about two people. One was a Pharisee. The other one was a sinner. The Pharisee was so proud. He was counting all his works. I have done this. I have done that. I have given my tithes. I pray this many times. I fast. I go to church. I do this. But the sinner stands over there. Wow unto me. I am a sinner. I have no hope without you. That is what we call the position of prayer. Do you want to be the salt of the earth? You have to have that position. Do you want to be the ambassador of Christ? You have to have that position, humble before God. Not judging, not condemning, but humble before God. Saying, without you, I have nothing. That is what we call the humility in prayer life. Humble ourselves under the hand of God. Humble ourselves in the kingdom of God. We have to be humble. You know, you live in one of the richest countries in the world. Everything you need, you have. The universities, the hospitals, the car, restaurants, hotels, resorts, airplanes, the ocean, everything that you need, you have. Every clothes that you, ha you need, you have. You have shoes, food, house, family, relative, health care, the best education. You have it all. When you live in that kind of situation, it is very easy to be proud. We are a great country. We are a great culture. We don't need God. We don't need the scripture. The Bible says, no matter what you have, you have to be humble. He is the one who gave you everything that you have. He is the one who gave you every food, every cloth, every knowledge, every health, every building, every land, every river, every tree that you have is a gift from God. And your eternity, your faith, your religion is a gift from God. A position of prayer is always to be humble, to have a broken heart, and to always come before God and seek Him with all our heart. My sixth point, the power of prayer. So many people think that prayer makes you powerless. But let me tell you, prayer makes you powerful. 
There is victory in prayer. When you kneel down or when you sit down and seek God and call his name, you become so powerful. Victory comes. Christians in China are not armed. They don't have money. They don't have power. They don't have a system or infrastructure. They are facing one of the most strongest communist system in the world. But all they do is pray. Through the power of prayer, they are shaking the foundation of communism in China. Prayer makes you powerful. The Western church is facing secularism, postmodern humanism, anthropomorphism. The Western church is facing a vicious atheism, skepticism. The Western church is facing criticism, persecution. The Western church is facing false teachings and arrogance and pride. The Western church is surrounded almost to be killed and to be obliterated from the face of the planet. In order for you to have power, you have to pray. You have to pray. My dear friends, prayer makes you powerful. That's why Jesus prayed when he started his ministry in the book of Matthew chapter 4. And he prayed when he ended his ministry in the garden of Gethsemane. Prayer makes you powerful. Prayer gives you power to do mission and ministry around the world. That's what I pray for you as a church, as a nation. I pray that there will be a wave of the Holy Spirit awakening the church in Denmark, Norway, Sweden, and Finland, awakening churches throughout Europe for the work of prayer. Lord, help us. Give us our nations back. Let the world see the power of the risen Christ the resurrected Lord. Immediately after the resurrection, 120 people in Jerusalem in the upper room, what were they doing? They were praying. While they were praying, the Holy Spirit came and they were all, they were all covered with power. Last, the person of prayer. God is inviting you to be a man and a woman of prayer, a person of prayer, somebody who prays, somebody whose life is spice, who's touched and who is positioned, who exercises and practices prayer, a man and a woman of prayer. Let me give you one evidence. How do you know that a person is a person of prayer? People who pray are not stressed. People who pray are relaxed. People who pray have an attitude of joy. People who pray are healthy and happy and hopeful. People who pray are always moving forward under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. People who pray trust in God. People who don't pray are always nervous, are always worried, are always stressed, always concerned, always fearful, always in doubt, always skeptical of about their future, always worried, reserved. People who pray rely on God. The Bible says, rest and know that I am God. Prayer is resting. Prayer is relaxing. A lot of people ask me, how do you relax? The best place to relax for me is a prayer place where I listen to gospel songs and worship and read the scripture and sit at the foot of the cross and unload everything that stresses me and walk out of that place with my two hands in my pocket. God is in charge. I am not in charge. God is the authority. I am not the authority. 
When you pray, when, when you are a person of prayer, you can be a leader. There are, why was Jesus a leader? When they're worried about food, he was not worried. When they're worried about money, he was not worried. When they're worried about this, he's not worried. He is always relaxed because he was a man of prayer. My friends, at the end of my message, if you have forgotten everything, please remember this. Prayer is having a true relationship with God. In order to have a true relationship with God, we have to speak the language of God. That language is a language of prayer. And it is the word of God. Come, come and sit at the foot of the cross and have a true relationship with God. If you turn your life into a prayer life, there is hope for this nation and there is hope for this generation. May God bless you and may God be with you. Now I ask you to meditate on one verse from the book of Colossians chapter four, verse two. It says, continue in prayer and watch in the same way with thanksgiving. Continue in prayer. God bless you. Take few moments and few minutes to sit and quietly meditate.